find scripture readings and what's written in the church correlating with this. <clears throat> I shall show unto you the judgment of the great harlot that sits upon many waters, and etc., along with the church writings that go with this. I'll show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. <clears throat> so I carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. <clears throat> and having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. Upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of eternal Savior. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. <clears throat> An angel said unto me, Wherefore did you marvel? I'll tell you the mystery of the woman and the, of the beast that carries her, which you have the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit <coughs> and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, and there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. We come to must continue short space. <coughs> And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, is of the seven, and goes into perdition. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which has received no kingdom as yet, <coughs> but received power as kings one hour of the, uh, with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb <coughs> shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. They are with him are called <clears throat> and chosen and faithful. Now continue with holding on to that thought. And he says unto me, The watchers which you saw <coughs> where the horse sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw upon a beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts <coughs> to fulfill his will and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. <coughs> And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. He cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great <coughs> is fallen, is fallen. It has become the inhabitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Fallen, fallen nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. <coughs> and the merchants of the earth are waxed switched through the abundance of her delicacies, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. You be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto, high, unto heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities. <coughs> Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she has filled, filled her double. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen, am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Hold on to that thought and meditate on that for about a minute or two. And uh, continue holding on to that thought.
And then uh, from the corresponding readings in the church, these are the ones who once were and are no more. <clears throat> Now, in reference to the stars that were once part of the church but fell into the mud by the dragon, <clears throat> he says, these are the ones who once were and are no more. <clears throat> these are the ones that ceased to be. The armies of heaven and the stars were once my own, but decided to part from me and become associates with the beast. They're all of one mind in putting their strength and their powers at the beast's disposal. <clears throat> They're selling me every day and profaning me in my perpetual sacrifice <clears throat> in the blessed <clears throat> sacrament of my divine love. See? See what great disorder is coming? So now let your voice go out to all the earth and my <clears throat> message to the end of the world. Have my peace to work with peace. Praise me for giving a new life to your soul. <clears throat> Glory be to God. I thank you. With all my heart, I thank you. I've been revived and you have given me a heart of flesh. My flesh has bloomed once more. By choosing me, you raised me to enjoy your <clears throat> favor, allowing me to live in your house all the days of my life. Bless be God, <clears throat> who allows me to enjoy every hour his sweetness, his tenderness, and his graces. The word of God <clears throat> is life. Teach my tongue to proclaim your goodness and praise your holy name forever and ever. Amen. Come, I bless you. I'll keep nursing you, and I will look after you. <clears throat> my Lord, may your holy name be held glorious forever my heart fletches with joy at your presence and i rejoice in your favor and everything you order me to do i try promptly to carry out in your <coughs> presence i experience the sweetness of your heart <coughs> and your teachings which are life joy Peace, love, and sanctity. <clears throat> they are a song for our soul, revealing the hidden mysteries of your kingdom. <clears throat> but when I sing your love song with all my heart and voice and bless your name, thrice holy, they come crashing upon me, calling me a wrongdoer. They sit on a judi judicial bench <coughs> with a scepter of falsehood always trying to invent new accusations. When will they renounce their fault? He says, lean on me. <clears throat> I am with you. But not those things worry your heart. I am in charge of my church. <clears throat> so never feel discouraged. Child of the king, my flower. Remember, there was no one to instruct you but myself. I came to teach you and through you others. I am your teacher and I love you. Learn from sweetness <coughs> itself. There, learn, my people, without self-interest and pass on without reserve. <coughs> Look, my child, I am known not to stand in awe of human greatness. If these became judges <coughs> and omit to observe holy things holily, will be adjudged themselves as unholy. Have you forgotten that I was treated as a blasphemer and I was condemned for this reason? So why are you surprised to be judged as someone who uses perverted and abusive language? They judge me by human standards as they judge you today. <clears throat> My child, fear not, loathe at all. On the day of judgment, they will come trembling in front of my throne <clears throat> to the reckoning of their sins unless they repent before their day. <clears throat> their ruthless judgment on you will be ruthless as well on them. Their accusations will accuse them. <clears throat> I tell you, child of the king, one day in my courts and on the judgment day, all those who accused you and sneered at you will be struck with remorse for having rejected my inexhaustible 
treasure from which this spirit could have acquired wisdom and won my friendship, this friendship that would have led them into the beauty of my sovereignty and splendor and the intimacy of their God. <clears throat> that break, that's a heartbreaking truth to think about. It breaks the heart to know that. I have warned you of these false teachers and false prophets. I had warned you that in the last days, Babylon will be erected into the heart of my sanctuary, <coughs> turning my holy place into a den of thieves, into hunt of devils. Oh, child, <coughs> a lodge for every foul spirit to abide and reign. <clears throat> a hunt of devils. <clears throat> Write that down. Hunt of devils. <clears throat> okay. They are busy trading. This is, oh child, a lodge for every foul spirit to abide and reign. They are busy trading in my own house. These traders are promoting their own in my house while ensnaring the lives of my people. They are after my prophets. They kill my mouthpieces and spare their own false prophets who expand heresies and errors. <clears throat> they dishonor my prophets in front of the world, lying to the world who love to listen to calumny and insult. They rip my traditions <clears throat> to install things they do not do, to, to install frills and in human doctrines. They rip my traditions to install frills and in human doctrines. All these things they do in front of my throne. These traitors, <coughs> these traitors are deceiving many with specious arguments. They place their own in the best seats to reign with a scepter of falsehood. <coughs> I have appointed you to be my echo. So go and proclaim what you have heard. Tell them that you are, live, you are all living under the great apostasy foretold. Tell my shepherds to open their eyes and ears to my anguished calls, for soon they will be forced to eat and drink venom. Summon your communities and prepare them for vigils of prayer and fasting. Satan <coughs> is on his way to put everyone on trial. He is coming to scatter you all and divide you. And he continues on and talks about <coughs> turning his house into desolation. <coughs> he says, He is on his way to my throne and in my tabernacle to sell my blood and remove my perpetual sacrifice. <coughs> A serious thing of consternation. 24th of January, 1991. And like builders, <clears throat> like builders, I shall send you from the end of the world with a cane in your hand like a measuring rod, as in Revelations 11, verse 1, to reconstruct my sanctuary <clears throat> and the altars that lie in ruin and have become the haunt of the devils, as it says in Revelations 18, verse 2. Pray, my beloved ones, that one may have time to convert. Pray that grace 
comes upon them so that they recognize and acknowledge the truth. Pray for those who have turned to myths rather than the truth. Pray for the conversion of the world. Pray that I inhabit every soul and that I make her my property. <clears throat> and, and he continues on. <clears throat> An important thing to look at. The voice of harpers, <clears throat> and then it says, And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in you. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he may be shall be heard found any more in you. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in you. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in you. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in you. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by the source, your sorceries were all nations deceived. <clears throat> And here it was found the blood of prophets and of saints of all that were slain upon the earth. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great harlot, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen! Hallelujah! A voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and you that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. To her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he says unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. He says unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So I'll just be to worship him. And he said unto me, See you do it not. I am your fellow servant and of your brothers which they have the testimony of eternal salvation. Worship God Almighty. For the testimony of eternal salvation is the spirit of prophecy. I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. <clears throat> and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, with that with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treads the winepress, the fierceness, the wrath of Almighty God. He has uh, set has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. <clears throat> and I saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together into the supper of the great God, <clears throat> and that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both small and great. <clears throat> Flesh of captains, flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. <clears throat> and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that worked miracles before him, which, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant was slain with the sword which of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. <clears throat> Let everyone who wishes come and take the wonder of life without any cost, without payment, for I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. 
If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord, everlasting salvation. The grace of our Lord, eternal Savior, the anointed, be with you all. Amen. <clears throat> Hold on to that thought as I get the next book, which is uh, Visions of What Happened About 2,000 Years Ago, <clears throat> because there's a lot of detail in it, and it's beautiful. <clears throat> There is the Virgin Mother sitting on a low stool. <clears throat> She's feeding some linen. Her beautiful young face is slightly bent forward, and she is smiling gently as if she were caressing or following some sweet thought. Beside the bookcase towards the door, which opens onto the kitchen garden, which is now covered in a fire curtain, gently moved by a light breeze, there is the Virgin sitting on a low stool. There is great silence in the little house. It is almost as bare as a cell. There is a peace and order. Everything is neat and tidy, and the room, although very modest looking and very modestly furnished, is almost as bare as a cell. I don't know whether there are peach or pear branches. They are certainly branches of fruit tree with pinkish <coughs> white flowers. It does a description. She's remembering the songs of the temple. And it must be a happy memory because she lays her hands in her lap while still holding the yarn and the spindle and lifts her head, leaning against the wall. Her face is beautifully flushed and her eyes are lost behind. I wonder what sweet thought. Her eyes are shining with tears, <coughs> which appear but do not overflow, and they make heaven make her eyes look larger, and yet those eyes are smiling. They are smiling at a thought they can see and by which Mary is abstracted from the earthly world. Star's face, flushed and girded by the plates she wears, whirled up like a crown around her head, seems a beautiful flower as it emerges from her plain white dress. <clears throat> the song changes into prayer. Most High Lord God, do not delay any longer in sending your servant, Most High, Eternal Now, God. Do not delay any longer in sending your servant to bring peace to the world. Grant us the favorable time and the pure and prolific virgin for the coming of your anointed one. Father, Holy Father, grant me your servant to offer my life for this purpose. Grant me to die after seeing your light and your justice on earth and after knowing that redemption has been accomplished. <coughs> and she continues her prayer. <coughs> While that is happening... In the sixth month, the angel, strength from God, was sent from the Almighty into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Increase of the House of Bubbling. The virgin's name was Star. And these are translated into English. <coughs>
and uh just hold the thought for a moment the angel greets her and uh says beautiful words of blessings to her <clears throat> which we will get more to say <clears throat> the angel comes in and shines his bright light on her causing the clothes and makes the colors of the clothes brighter and Mary's raised face more spiritual. In such light, while the curtain is still drawn on the mystery to be accomplished, the archangel prostrates himself. The curtain no longer moves. It is hanging stiff against the doorpost like a wall separating the inside from the outside. <clears throat> the angel must necessarily take a human appearance, but it is a transhumanized appearance. Of what flesh is this beautiful and gleaming feature figure made with what substance did God form it to make it perceptible to the senses <clears throat> of the virgin? God only can possess such substances use them so perfectly. It is a face, a body, eyes, a mouth, hair, and hands like ours, but they are not our dull matter. It is a light that has taken the color of flesh of eyes, hair, lips, a light that moves and smiles, looks, and speaks. <clears throat> and the angel says, mm -hmm. and the angel came into her and says, Hail! Star, full of grace, hail, the I am who I am is with you, blessed you among women. He says, hail, Mary, star, full of grace, hail, the voice is a sweet arpeggio as of pearls thrown on precious metal plate. Mary is startled and lowers her head, and she is even more startled when she sees the shining creature kneeling at about a meter from her and looking at her with infinite veneration. <clears throat> She subconsciously presses her hands against her breast, hiding them under her large sleeves. She stoops, endeavoring to conceal her body as much as possible in an attitude of gentle modesty. No, do not fear. The Lord, I am who I am, is with you. You are blessed amongst all women. But Mary continues to be afraid. And right here it says, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutations this should be. The angel speaks to her. But Mary continues to be afraid. Where has this extraordinary being come from? He says, do not fear, Mary. The angel says, fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name. I am that I am saves. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his aunt, father David. He shall reign over the house of supplanter forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. <clears throat> Do not fear, Mary, repeats the archangel. I am strength from God, Gabriel, the angel of God. My Lord has sent me to you. Do not be afraid, because you have found grace in the eyes of the Almighty. And you will conceive and bear a son, and you will call him eternal salvation. He will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High, and such he will really be. And the self-existent God will give him the, the throne of his ancestor bubbling. And he continues on. He'll rule the house of supplanter forever, and his reign will have no end. Understand, O holy virgin, loved by God, daughter blessed by him, called to be the mother of his almighty son. What son you'll generate? <clears throat> and she says, and, and then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? <clears throat> She says, how can this come about since I do not know man? Marital embrace has no marital embrace with man. I'm a virgin. Perhaps the self-existent God will no longer accept the offer of his maidservant and does not want me a virgin for his love? <clears throat> and then the angel answers. The angel answers, said unto her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall over 